In today's episode, I'm sharing my personal story about how my two boys are always clashing and how I'm trying to help them get through it. This is how legends are made. Hi guys, I hope you're doing super well. Today it's Tuesday and I wanted to share a story that kind of came up over the weekend and it relates to kind of siblings but particularly relates to my two boys. And I share it just as kind of just a, a, a therapy for myself as much as information for you. And it came about because my two boys have around four and a half, five years difference in age. My youngest is just turned 10, my eldest is 14 and a half. There's a big age gap. And I don't know if you experience this, if you have children or boys or girls, but their age gap, um, or maybe because they're boys, it creates a lot of friction and there's a lot of tension. Um, there's things that my youngest wants to do with my eldest that he doesn't want to do and he gets in his way and he doesn't express himself very well and becomes more of a pain and there's flare-ups and problems and shouting. And they don't get particularly uh, violent. They have play fights, but they just have these trigger spots and I understand it, I see it regularly, and one of the things I seem to monitor the most, apart from the volume of phones and devices and TVs in the, in the house, is about their relationship, about trying to kind of balance out both's needs, respecting both's needs, um, but trying to kind of keep them living in the same space, you know, equally, or at least well, without kind of flare-ups. And that is a negotiation challenge. Um, one I'm gonna get through, but one I'd like to improve on. And one of the ways I think is about really communicating better with my eldest. So over the weekend, it was my youngest's birthday party and I spoke to my eldest particularly about this. There'd been a number of flare ups and this was building up anyway. The birthday party was a convenient point to have a chat with him. And I sat with him and said, look, you've got to understand something that's so critical that your younger brother adores you. He thinks you're God. He puts you on a pedestal that is probably higher and different than he puts me or his mum on. It's a completely different level. There's, you can do no wrong. You are everything to him. He adores you. And I said to him that the issue is that how he expresses those feelings, how he connects with you is the issue. And I likened it to him, I gave him the example, it's like you've got, to, you've got to hit a nail into a bit of wood and everyone else, or most people, are using maybe a hammer to do it. And imagine that the nail is, is love or affection or attention or admiration and the way to deliver that is, is, you know, is, is using the hammer. And that's how we, how we are, it's very precise, it does a job without, with minimal fuss. Whereas my youngest doesn't have a hammer he just has a wrecking ball. And the wrecking ball is a thing he uses to try and express love. And he's doing that by kind of trying to hit the hammer. But in the meantime, we're trying to, sorry, not hitting the hammer, hitting the nail. In the meantime, we're trying to actually hit the nail. He's broken the brick wall or the wood or wherever things are surrounding it. He's just demolished other things just to get that nail in. And sometimes he's going to miss the nail entirely. And that's what happens. And what was great was as I expressed this particular metaphor about it, it really connected with my son. And when we have therapy and we're going to go into going to work, when someone kind of laughs, when you say something, I often use that as a bit of a trigger of recognition of a truth for them that they can recognize and they're aware of. So he was laughing at that particular analogy or that metaphor. And he took it on board and I think he, and it did sink in. I'm conscious as well that that may not be the one and only time I have to refer to it. But I hope that maybe the repetition, the consistency in that will help him at least put a buffer between his initial response and maybe a more considered response, which is all I can actually ask for uh, in, in, in most days. So yes, so the story is the wrecking ball story, how young children have difficulty expressing emotions uh, in a subtle and articulate way. And then this particular example, how with my eldest, we can make him understand that and maybe a little bit more sympathetic or compassionate to the situation, maybe a little less aggressive, which would be wonderful. So that was it, that's what I'm gonna share with you, just a little kind of a, a slice from my parenting life, which I find interesting, but as always, there's something in there which you might be able to extract and get some benefit from. 
And as ever, if you have enjoyed this particular episode, please give it a like, thumbs up, drop me a comment. And if you think someone needs to hear this particular message or get something from it, or at least can relate to it, please share it. That'd be wonderful as well. But that's me done for today. I will catch you on the next episode. This is how legends are made.